too many times we're too busy. We're too busy caught up in this world and we don't take the time to be still. To be still and know that I am God. And that he's a God that will be exalted above the nations and above the earth. When we put on the whole armor of God and stand, we are still. Standing still. So we can know God and be empowered by his Holy Spirit. When we are standing, when we are still, we can see the salvation of the Lord and know that God is still in control. Be still and watch the mountains being moved. The giants falling down before you. Everything in your life that is standing up against you that's been keeping you down, don't be afraid. Be still. And change the way you think. Put on the helmet of salvation, the mind of Christ. Renew your mind every day by the word of God. Our God will be honored among the nations at the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our God will be exalted among the nations and in the earth for he is God. He will be exalted. We are the children of God. We are here to unleash the kingdom of God on earth. For the kingdom of God is within you. You have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. Unleash the Spirit of God. Out of your belly should be flowing rivers of water of life. Be still. Be silent. Knowing that God is on your side, that he's for you and not against you. That he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Jesus said it best when he said, peace, be still. In times of attack, in times of heartbreak, in times of sickness, in times of trouble, we are to surrender everything to God. Give it to him. Be calm. Rest in him. Because I promise you that we are all moving in a time of storms and raging waves of the sea. Can't, can't you hear the sound of the roaring of the nations? A time of darkness evil days ahead to the world it's a time of panic not knowing what to do in that day they don't know what to do those that don't know the word of God they don't know where to turn they don't know where to go they don't know anything but I'm going to tell you something there's coming a time that they will turn to God but by that time they done removed the truth because everything about Jesus Christ offends them because the word of God is a sharp powerful two edged sword and it pierces them you know that don't you church everyone you try to preach to everyone you try to win over they feel the piercing of that sword that pierces them and they immediately are offended. How many people have you been around that are supposed to be in the church that are Christians that will sit there and argue the word of God with you and you want to look at them and say, wait a minute, I thought we were on the same side. How many a times have you been attacked by more so-called Bible readers, Christians that don't miss a day of church You'll find out that your enemy 
is with the church than it is with the sinners. I don't know about you, but I've seen that too many times. Just Easter, everyone was gathered over here for Sunday dinner. And any time the Word of God is brought up, there's a, there's a battle. There really is. Everyone's yelling, screaming at the other one, and, I, and they always want to turn to me. And I tell them, oh, I'm not going to get involved in this. The Word of God is to uplift us. It is to edify us. It is to be a blessing. It is to bless us. Here you are, supposed to be joined together, united together, and you're fighting one another with the Word of God. Everyone's quoting scriptures. Everyone's right. Now I ask you this. When we come together in that kind of spirit, where is God getting the glory? You think there's any glory for God in that? He doesn't want anything to do with that mess. But it's true. Christians will fight other Christians. And you're not supposed to be enemies. Your enemy is those that are not of the faith, that are not in the church. We have more enemies in the house of God than we have out of the house of God. I will not argue the word of God with anyone. If the word of God doesn't bless you, it doesn't bless me, I'm not being edified by the word of God, I will get up and walk away. But that's how the enemy works. He's so subtle. Everybody want to be right. Everybody wants you to hear what their preacher said. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. It's not worth it, church. Take the higher road. Walk off. It's not worth it. I promise you, you won't win. They won't win. And God certainly will not receive any glory out of that. It's a mess. Don't be a part of it. But church, that's where we are today. While we were all gathered together Sunday for Sunday dinner, one of my family members, as a matter of fact, my older son, Dennis, he said something to all of us. He said, have you noticed something about the eclipse coming? Everyone thinks that eclipse is, is a sign. That change is coming. He said, I was talking with some people that shared with me that the eclipse was a sign to them that they needed to change their life. Because it means trouble's on the way. And I said, what kind of trouble do you think the eclipse is about to bring in the little bit of time it's going to be here? Of all the eclipse that we have, and we will continue to have eclipse what kind of trouble, what kind of sign do you think it means to you? And all of them wanted to know, did the Holy Spirit of God warn me of this eclipse? I said, no, he did not. Because we are in an evil and wicked generation that is seeking after signs. And if that's where you're walking, then the son of perdition is going to love you because there's lying signs and wonders coming. Put your faith and your trust in God. Church, I was shocked to know that we are moving in a day and a time that they are so many that know nothing about the Word of God. They don't read the Word of God. But they'll put their faith in a eclipse. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 
that you're going to put your... No wonder Jesus talked about the evil and wicked generation that's seeking after signs when they need to repent or perish. Why are they not taking the time to study out the words of God and to pray and to find out what God has for you? Oh, they don't want to do that. It's easier just to look up. Because that eclipse is trying to tell me something. Police. What is it going to tell you? It's not going to tell me anything. I'm not looking after signs and wonders. Because I know great deception is coming. Lines, signs, and wonders. See, if they read the word of God, they'd have known that. But no, they believe that that's a sign. A sign. Because they are evil and wicked generation that is seeking after signs. Be still and know God. Open up the word of God. Read the word of God. Allow God to speak to you. Listen to the still small voice. God is still talking. But too many of you are looking for signs. And you'll get them because it will be given to an evil and wicked generation that are seeking after signs. Put your trust in God. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the time to do it. Repent of your sins. Accept the great gift of of salvation through the cross and the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made 2,000 years ago when he shed his precious blood to redeem you, wash you, and cleanse you of all your sins and unrighteousness. Make him the Lord of your life today and know God. Know God. Exalt God in your life. Let him be exalted. Let your light shine that men will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. It is said that there are so many out there that do not know God. While, while others argue the word of God, I have sat back and I have listened and I have watched. And that's not the Spirit of the Lord. Do you ever see the Spirit of the Lord there? Because the Holy Spirit of God will not be a part of that. Where other Christians are fighting one another over the Word of God. When did we become that? Christians fighting Christians. Trying to devour one another with the word of God. Trying to consume them with the word of God. Using the word of God as your weapon. I thought we were supposed to be together. I thought we were supposed to be united together, walking together in the spirit, led by the Holy Spirit of God. No wonder Jesus said to his disciples, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. And that's what I wanted to say that day. You don't know what manner of spirit you're of. You don't know if you're of the spirit of God or the spirit of the devil. That's sad. That's heartbreaking, but it's true. If the word of God does not edify you, does not bless you, lift you up, encourage you, then you're using the sword wrong. What manner of spirit are you of? If you attack other Christians, those that are preaching, teaching, trying to lead others into salvation, how can Christians come together and argue the word of God. 
And boy, they'll pull out them scriptures so fast, it's not even funny. And no one's being blessed. God's not receiving any glory out of that. And I won't be a part of it. It's wasting my valuable time. And my time is valuable. I want to be about my Father's business. Everything I do, I pray that it gives glory and honor to my God, to my Father. I have been off being still. Because church, we have not been hit with the worst of what is coming. But it's coming nevertheless. Let us be ready. Let us be prepared. Prepare your hearts to meet the Lord. Prepare. Trust God. Because he's the only one, the only, only one that can strengthen us and keep us safe. Because you see, he'll tell you what to do in the time you need to know what to do. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to lead you, teach you, and guide you. He is the Spirit of truth. Amen. I'm not led by any one flesh and blood. I move when the Spirit of God moves me. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to move you. Be empowered from on high. Don't be empowered by the foolishness of this world. Don't be moved by signs and wonders. Don't allow the spirit of the devil to move you. Out of your belly should be flowing rivers of water of life. Today it's getting hard to tell the Christians from the sinners. It's hard to tell who is on the Lord's side and who's on the devil's side. Truly the enemy is stirring up the spirits of violence everywhere he goes, even in the house of God. I have seen it too many times. So you think on these things today, my dear, dear, precious friends. Open up the Word of God and read the Word for yourself. Allow God to speak to you. What does He have for you? Never use the Word of God. You cannot beat people over the head with the Word of God, church. Only love love can win people over there was a young girl that was here for dinner she's 37 she's a friend of my daughter's the whole time she was with me she just kept saying i know i do this do you condemn me i said sister please i condemn no one but i love you i don't care what you've done there's nothing that you have done that you cannot be forgiven for. What you have done does not offend me, and I do not condemn or judge you. Let every man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. The Holy Spirit of God will lead you, and he will guide you, and he will convict you, not me. I am not that kind of minister. But I will lead you to salvation. I even asked her, you know, if you need to ask me anything, I don't know everything, but what I do know, I am willing to share it with you. Uh, and she said, no, I know you know the word of God. I'm new to this. I don't know anything. I said, you don't know nothing. No, I don't even read the Bible. I said, well, start reading the Word of God. And my son-in-law was telling her, 
starting the book of John. I told her, you start where you're led to read. And you just read the word of God and pray for discernment. Pray for the Holy Spirit of God to reveal what he wants you to know through the word of God. I said, I'm here if you need me. I don't force anything on anyone. I don't condemn anyone. And she just kept asking me over and over again, do you condemn me? And I said, no, I condemn no one, but I love you. I want you to know that I love you, and if you need me, I'm here. God is amazing, church. God is amazing. How he will bring people across your path. So you think on these things today. Think on these things. Because I tell you, the Holy Spirit of God is going to revive us. He's stirring up that spirit within us. He is preparing us for what is coming. And we're going to stand. And we're not going to be in a panic. Because we know who we serve. We serve a mighty God who's able to do above and beyond what we ask of him. Our trust is in him. But if you keep allowing the world to keep pulling you over to the dark side... Be careful that that darkness does not consume you because the more you walk in that dark side, it will devour a little of your light. That's why we were warned to, by Jesus. We were warned to keep our lamps full of oil so you're not consumed by the darkness of this world. Amen? Have a blessed and victorious day to day in Jesus Christ. Most holy name we pray. And let the church say amen and amen. I love you, my dear, dear, precious friends. I thank God for you. I have been sensing the newness of what God has promised me in my ministry and in my walk with God. And I certainly feel more of the boldness of the Spirit of God as He has been empowering me from on high. I see the newness within me as I've been waiting for the promises of God in my life. It's just amazing how He works, isn't it, church? It just really is. Once we surrender, that's the key. Stop trying to work it out for your own self. Surrender everything to God. And allow your steps to be ordered by God. Amen. Have a blessed and victorious day today. Know that I love you. You are in my prayers. Keep me in yours, my dear precious friends. Have a blessed day. And be a blessing. Amen.